a millimeter wave sensor, super small, just for 10 euros, and the whole thing is even open source. How it works, I'll show you after the intro. Have fun. The wish of every smart home enthusiast is actually that the smart home takes work off their hands. So, for example, also turning on and operating the light switches at home. It would be perfect and, uh, if lamps could turn on uh, and off completely automatically. In the past, people used regular motion sensors for this. Nowadays, however, there are millimeter wave sensors, which have the advantage of detecting you even if you don't move or move very little, as would be the case in a living room, bedroom or office. With these millimeter wave sensors, it would theoretically be possible to completely do away with light switches. And that's exactly why I find them really fascinating. However, as is always the case with new technologies, they are initially quite bulky, usually from some Chinese manufacturers and also relatively expensive. Oh my God, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Fortunately, this has changed over time as you can now buy uh, these uh, sensors individually. So instead of using something like this Sonos device where you have all the hardware in one, you can also get these uh, individual components here. And this here is a millimeter wave sensor. If you combine it with an ESP32, Archie, or rather with a mini ESP32, you can turn the whole thing into a very, very small package and create a completely self-built sensor. The advantage of this, especially when we connect it with East Poem, is that we can fully configure set up, update, and customize it ourselves through Home Assistant. Because an ESP32 naturally comes with a lot of features. Theoretically, you could, for example, use the device as a Bluetooth proxy, thus extending your own Bluetooth network, or you could connect additional sensors to it and turn the whole thing into a multi-sensor if you wish. Of course, you can also keep it simple and just connect these two devices together. Then you have only a millimeter wave sensor, which because these two components are so affordable, cost less than 10 euros. Of course, this is somewhat impractical. That's why I'll show you how to assemble the whole thing as I sat down and designed a complete housing for it in 3D, which I will make available to all channel members below. Additionally, I thought, no, if you are a channel member or would like to become one, I would be happy to print three of these housings on request and send them to my channel members for free. Just leave me a comment and I'll get in touch with you and send you one of these things. The housing is actually quite simple, consisting of three parts, the base, the body, and the lid. The base is simply attached to the lid with a small screw. And then we can adjust the angle as we like. On the back, there is space for the USB-C port, which allows us to both flash and charge the device. And once we have installed all the components inside, we can close the lid on top, which simply snaps into place. And then our sensor is ready. We need to connect the ESP32 image to the millimeter web sensor. For this, I have created a diagram. There you can see exactly how they need to be connected. Afterwards, download the code, which is available for all channel members from the video description below. Then open ESP Home, click on New Device, Continue, Give the device a name and select the ESP32C3, which we also have. Then click on Skip, Edit, oh. and insert the code from the video description. After that, click on Install once more. Select your preferred installation method. I choose Manual Download here because I want to flash everything later via ESP Home Web. Then I wait for the compilation to complete and can flash everything via web.sfoam. You can find the link in the video description, of course. Once it is flashed, go into Home Assistant, click on Settings, Devices, and you should see it displayed. Now you can easily add it to your smart home and you'll already see this list of possibilities you have with it. For instance, we can see the current distance to the sensor. Then we can see whether ooh, someone has been detected or not. We can set the maximum distance here. We can set the minimum distance from which it should detect someone. We can set a timeout here. So from when the sensor reports that it hasn't detected anyone anymore, we can theoretically also calibrate it. However, I have it running in normal mode here and actually um, didn't 
need to calibrate it at all. And then we can set values here at the bottom for when it should start detecting movements and when it should stop detecting movements. And finally, we also see here at the bottom, and this is very important, uh, the installed firmware of the device because there are different revisions of this millimeter wave sensor and you definitely need uh, one that is greater than version 1.5 for the um, configuration to work as we are using it here. I'll link the sensor for you in the description below if you want to replicate this. Additionally, it's also quite practical for you to see if the connection between the microcontroller and the millimeter wave sensor has been correctly installed by you. If it doesn't show the firmware after booting, you can try disconnecting the power again. If the correct firmware still doesn't appear, then you've probably made a mistake with the wiring. And once that's sorted out, we can of course directly integrate it into an automation. To do this, simply go to automation. Will it create a new automation? And then we can use both presence, LAM, as a trigger, but of course also the moving distance. So if we place the device smartly in the room, like in this office, which is divided into two parts, we could install it on one side of the office, check the distance in Home Assistant, and then recognize that if the distance is above a certain value, I know I'm in the desk area. Accordingly, the light should be on there. And if the whole thing is detected in a closer range, then I'm in this area and should accordingly turn the lamp here on and off. Thus, with one sensor, you could theoretically even define multiple zones and control them. But of course, we can also define certain gray areas with it. So if we say we have a street in front of the door or a window where people occasionally walk back and forth, we could also define this distance as a restricted area and say that if the distance is greater than that, it should not trigger the automation at all. So you can already see this gives you a whole lot of possibilities. Of course, there are also larger sensors that can do much more and can accordingly detect whether you are further to the left or further to the right. This way you could actually cover i.e. even more three-dimensional spaces. However, this part is so affordable that you could theoretically just install several of these sensors and thereby cover this automation uh, as well. In principle, you could also take two of these sensors, one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis of the room, and then calculate a 3D detection of the room by combining the distances from both sensors and it would probably still be cheaper in the end than buying such an expensive sensor. I definitely think the whole thing is a very very cool project and for under 10 euros um, you really can't go wrong. As I said I'll link everything in the description. Feel free to check it out and if you're interested give it a try. Feel free to write your feedback in the comments. And last but not least of course an Amazon voucher for all the loyal viewers who quickly click on these videos. If you are one of them, then congratulations. If you only got to see the video later, feel free to click on subscribe. Help me improve this statistic a bit. I would really appreciate it. And it also gives you the chance to snag such a voucher next time. In any case, thank you for watching. Thank you very much. And then I would say, yeah, we'll see each other again next week for a new video. Until then, take care, have a good one and goodbye.